right, y'all. So I am home, and guess what is waiting for me? My friend Titi was here to make sure that we got our latest machine. So now I just got to unbox this. Hey y'all, so y'all saw that we have a new machine to unbox and I'm super excited. If this is your first time here, I'm Patrice. Welcome, this is Craftable Things. Please be sure to look at the other content. If you enjoy that content, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel. Now, I already have a Rakoma EM1010, which is Rakoma's 10 needle embroidery machine. However, I recently upgraded to the 20 needle Marquee 2001 with the 10S panel. That is Rakoma's latest touchscreen panel. And y'all, I got a chance to test it out previously and I absolutely love this 10S panel. So we're going to get ready to unbox it. I'm just gonna walk you all through the steps of unboxing it and getting started with your machine. Now, if you get a machine from Rakoma, the trainings are very important because your warranty depends on it. So you don't wanna skip any of the pre-trainings or the actual live training because that will void your warranty and you don't wanna do that. But I absolutely love Recoma, their customer service and their tech support. You can get help fairly quickly to help troubleshoot any problems that you're having. Now, if you are new to embroidery and this is something that you are considering, you want to make sure you do all of your research so that you know what you're doing before you even get into ordering or buying a machine, whether it's Rakoma or not, you need to know what it is that you need to know before embroidering. Now, one of the questions that I get a lot is when people get their embroidery machine and they're trying to upload an SVG file and have their machine stitch an SVG file out. Your machine cannot stitch SVGs, PNGs, JPEGs, anything like that. So depending on the machine that you have, you need to make sure that you get your designs digitized and you want them to be digitized based on the machine that you have. So with Rakoma, we are going to be using DST file extensions with our machine, and those are files that are already digitized and ready to be uploaded into our system. So I just thought I needed to say that because that is something that I get often when people get new embroidery machines and they're like, I can't, I can't stitch out my files, and it's because you're using the wrong file type. So definitely do research, but y'all, that's it. Let's get ready to open up this box because I cannot wait to use this machine. Let's get started. All right, guys. So now we're in the Myrocoma portal, and this is for customers who have purchased machines. This is going to be your first step into learning how to operate your new embroidery machine. And so my products are, these are all the different machines and items that I have from Rakoma to operate my embroidery machines. So you want to make sure that you do the pre-training first before you even operate your machine because this is important with your warranty as well. As you guys see, this is Brody right here, our EM1010. But now we have the Marquee 2001 10S machine, which is a 20 needle machine, okay? And so you'll just click here, start pre-training. And this is going to walk you through getting your machine fully set up. As y'all saw, I've already completed the training, but these are the different things that you're going to be learning. So this should be your very first step. Don't skip it because this will take you through setting up your stand so that your machine can be placed onto it. And you need to know that for certain, you need to know how to do that because this machine is pretty heavy. Okay, so it's going to just walk you through what's included. It's going to also let you know how to set up your machine on the stand and those sorts of things. So you will walk through the different parts of getting your machine going, what's included. Then you'll also go through threading Welcome your machine. Back. In this video, we will be exploring threading. Then you will also go through thread tension. And what the thread tension is, is the top pull and the bottom pull from the bobbin case, just how to get it perfect so that you don't have puckering or you're not showing the bottom thread on top. That's pretty much why thread tension is important. 
We'll also walk through the 10SS panel overview, which is their newest panel. And y'all, I love this panel. I did get the opportunity to test it out and I absolutely love it. You'll also go through embroidering flat. So if you've never done this before, you really want to make sure that you're paying these lessons attention because guess what? After this, you'll be, be ready to set up your training for using the machine. So even though you get everything connected, you don't want to use the machine. You want to make sure you go through your training first. Okay. And so that's pretty much, that's pretty much it for this part. And we are going to head over to our new machine, Broski. All right, y'all, so now we're at our machine, and as you see, he's already set up. I did set up the stand. That's the first thing that you want to do. As you go through your chain, you'll see that. However, when I did this, I didn't record it because I really wasn't feeling all that great, but I knew that I wanted to get this set up, and my friend Fifi and my neighbors actually got the machine from the crate to the stand, and I did not, I wasn't even in the vicinity when they were getting it done. So I really appreciate them for that because now all I have to do is set the machine up. This is the Recoma Marquee 2001 with the 10S panel. And I absolutely love it already and I have not even gotten it started. I know that it's gonna work amazingly because guess what? My Recoma EM10 works beautiful too. So now you'll be able to see which machine will work best for you. This is a more commercial machine than the EM1010, but depending on your needs, you can decide what you wanna do from there. What I love with Recoma is that when you get one of their machines, you pretty much get hands-on training with it. You also get customer support, which is great, but you also get most of the materials. But before I get into that, Recoma sent me a little goodie bag and inside of here we have oh, how do you think beyond because you know think beyond is their thing and so we have a little bit of a note here which i love and then they also sent me oh a little notepad and i love these because i'm always writing stuff down they sent me a pen and this is a very pretty pen, rose gold and black, two of my favorite color combos. I also have a lanyard that they sent to me. And they also sent some hand sani. And what else do we have in here? And in here we just have like some other, some other things we have in here. And another magnetic notepad. So thanks for that, Rokoma. And shout out to Brianna for being amazing. Just absolutely amazing. All right, so what all comes with the machine? So we have this super huge table and this table is just meant to be, it's a flat table for when you're embroidering flat things and you may wanna use this table. It's very heavy so you will probably need some help getting it onto the machine. I've already removed the brackets, but there are brackets that it needs to sit on to provide the support for the table because it is pretty heavy. And also they sent me this hat, these hats. These are auto hats. They're blanks to test these out. And so they're, these are what the hats look like. I got three of them. Very nice hats. These are nice. You got the dad hat, low profile hat, and then you have the snapback. They also sent different types of stabilizer and you need stabilizer. If this is your first time looking at an embroidery video or you're interested in doing embroidery, stabilizer is very important. And the types of stabilizer that you use per garment is very important to know which one you should use. So usually for the tearaway, tearaway stabilizer is for things that you're never going to wash or heavy, like very heavy material, but things that you're never going to wash. The cutaway stabilizer, that's for items that you're going to be washing, um, getting a lot of wear out of and things like that. And so they also sent some thread. I have thread from Madeira and these are not the larger thread pools, but 
you will be able to get quite a bit done with these. All right, and so in one of these packages, there are 10 different colors, and these colors are very nice. But those are your basic colors. In this one, we have some bobbin. And these are pre-wound bobbin. You can throw this away because these are paper. I love those, they're my favorite. Then you also have more thread. And you have some needles, like a, another kit in here with some extra needles and things like that. So for today, we're gonna be using the thread that they sent to get our machine threaded. And also what I love is that the machine comes pre-threaded. So we won't have to really go through all the different loops and tension knobs and everything to get this threaded. I'm gonna show you how easily that can be done. But I do wanna recommend that you watch the training videos because you really do need to know how to thread your machine, especially if you get a tension situation and sometimes the machine just really needs to be re-threaded. Not the whole thing, but if you're working on, let's say the 14th um, needle, you wanna make sure if there's tension there, you may need to re-thread that one or you may need to adjust the knobs. There's different things that you would need to check and so sometimes you may need to re-thread it. So you want to make sure that you know how to properly re-thread your machine, okay? Today we're going to do it the easy route, and you guys will see this. You're going to absolutely love threading it this way. Your machine also comes with hoops, which is probably one of the most important parts of the machine, so that you can actually get your items embroidered. And these are the hoops that it comes with. Now I know that I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be adding some Mighty Hoops to this machine because I absolutely love the Mighty Hoops and the ease of hooping with them. But your machine comes with hoops so that you can actually get your projects done. All right, so also with the machine, it already comes with the cap driver installed and a cap driver is for you to be able to embroider pads. However, it also comes with the cap station, one cap station, and it also comes with two cap hoops. And these are the cap hoops here, okay? So this is how you would be able to embroider your, your caps and your hats. And it kind of looks like this. This is the cap station. And you wanna make sure that you attach this to something that is nice and sturdy. And when you get ready to embroider your hat, then you put the cap rings on it. And finally, this is probably one of the most important things that you're gonna need is the toolbox. And with this toolbox, you get pretty much everything you need to get your machine shut, set up, troubleshoot, they send extra supplies for you. You also get a flash drive so that you can put your files on but you get pretty much everything that you need. Also included in here are your brackets. And the brackets are important for when you're hooping your machine. So once we remove the cap driver, then you want to place your brackets on for regular embroidery and not hat embroidery. All right, and these are your two brackets. So these will go in place of the cap driver You'll usually put them here or based on your hoop that you have, you'll adjust it that way. So you may have it this close or it may be out even wider, but these are for your hoops and these little screws here will just tighten it up so that you can get it set. All right, y'all, so now we're at the machine and we just need to loosen up our tension rack so that we can raise it. And so you wanna do this on both sides. And so I'm just lifting it loosening it up so I can lift it and I'm also going to do that on the other side as well let's see if I loosened it up enough so once you have it loosened you want to raise it as high as it will go okay you want to raise it as high as it will go and when you do that then you're going to tighten it back up and we're just gonna go in the opposite direction. And of course, you wanna do that on both sides. Okay, 
Okay, now that we have that all done, now we're going to work on other parts of the machine. All right, guys, so this is the new panel. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove the plastic bag covering. Now there is still a protective clear film on top and I'm gonna leave that on for now. If you want, you can take it off. There is just a, a cute little tab there that you can pull. All right, so we're all set. Now you can adjust this. Right now it seems pretty stationary, but what I love about this machine already, these knobs are included here and all you have to do if you want to adjust it, you just loosen it up and then you can tilt it. And then if you want it in that position, you just tighten it up there. And then also with this top knob, you'll be able to kind of move it from right to left, okay? And then you just tighten it back up. All right guys, so now we're gonna get ready to plug our machine in and the outlet is over here on this side. As you can see, I'm just gonna plug it in. And we're just gonna get this up and started. large and heavy table came with the machine for flat embroidering and what you would typically do is use these two brackets to place this on top of it however I'm not going to be using that very soon so what you want to do is you want to remove these from the side so these are your table brackets and you want to remove those from the machine so to remove it, of course, we're coming to send tons of tools. We're gonna to use the number four Allen wrench to remove the brackets. And when you remove it, just make sure you keep all of the nuts and bolts. And you wanna do this on both sides. I would recommend labeling your, your tools, your screws, everything. Maybe get some small bags or some small containers so that you can remember what belongs with what part of the machine. Because you'll find yourself doing this often. All right, so now it's time for us to thread our machine and you can put this here, but what I, I'm gonna take these off because these are the smaller spools of thread and it just does not fit good on top of here. So I'm actually going to remove the plastic part and you just can pull these up. Now you wanna keep these for when you do get larger spools so that it can sit nicely on top of it, okay? But the, the larger ones, it'll cover it and go all the way down, but I definitely don't want that like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna sit this here for now. What I do wanna do is I wanna show you guys the thread. So the machine is already pre-threaded and that's why you see all of this thread right here. So I'm just going to loosen this up and bring these down. So that way it'll be a little bit easier for me to actually thread. And it's just in like a little, they just looped it around. Now you can snip it if you want, but I'm just gonna do it this way. All right, so now that put them all down and now we can go ahead and we can actually snip some of this off so that way when we get ready to tie it, it won't be too much. But I'm just going to go ahead and remove the plastic parts without removing the holder. All right, guys, so I have all of those holders removed and we're going to get ready to place our thread on top. And to read the numbers, if you look at the front of your machine, 
you have all of the numbers one through 20 for each of your threads. And to read them and also to place them through the actual path, you're going to go from here. So this is your first thread. Okay. So you're going to go one, two, three, four. And then you come back up here, five, six, seven, eight. So that's how you'll be able to tell your machine which color is for which needle, okay? So you're gonna go for one, two, three, four, then you come back up, five, six, seven, eight, and then you go back, go over to the third row, nine, 10, 11, 12, the fourth row, 13, 14, 15, 16, and the last row over here, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and get ready to begin threading these. And I'm just going to place them here. Um, these two colors, black and white, I kind of like my main colors that I use the most, black and white, to be closest because, of course, those are the threads that you'll probably be replacing more often. Okay, so that may be different for you, but for me, that's what it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and place green and blue here. And now I have different shades. The samples that came, there's different shades of like blues, different shades of greens and yellows. And so that's kind of, I'm just gonna use the thread that came with the machine for now. All right, and you may do the same thing too if you haven't ordered any, any larger spools of thread. All right, guys, so now that we have all of these on the machine, now it's time for us to just tie one loose end to the actual spool, okay? And so we're going to do that by just bringing this down. I'm going to just get the end of this spool right here, and I'm just going to bring it around until it's loose. And there we have it loose. I'm gonna put this here. And then I am just going to tie this end with this one, just like this. It doesn't have to be so much, but it's gonna work out. All right. I'm just tying it in a little knot. Okay, and when we get ready to pull it through, it's gonna just flow through the channels appropriately. I'm gonna tie all of these together the same way I did this, and then you'll see how we're going to bring it through the machine. And to help me stay on track, I'm just gonna thread the machine just in order of number. So as you see, like each thread is gonna hang on top of where it should be. And so that's how I'm just gonna do it, just so that I don't get anything confused. I'm just gonna go in that order because then I'll keep everything as it should be. We're done tying the threads together. And so now it's time for us to pull these through. Now in the training video, it shows you like to pull them through all at one time, but I still like to be a little bit cautious and I'm going to pull these through pretty much one by one, okay? So they say just grab it and then just pull it through and they should all follow the thread path but I am just gonna pull it through one by one. And once I see that color changing, oh no. So if you look here, we have it pulling through and it's just following the thread path. All right, there we go, that's through. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the blue. And it's just gonna keep following that thread path.
once you pull all your threads through make sure the knotted part is fully through so that you can see the new thread you're going to actually thread your needles and to thread your needles you want to place the thread from the front of the needle and push it to the back and then you want to put it through the hole in the presser foot once it's in the hole of the presser foot you're just going to bring it up and you're going to stick that thread into those spirals so you just lift it up and that's where your thread will sit it will be out of the way of the other presser foot and then you want to just snip a little bit of that off all right so now it's time for us to remove our hat driver and our hat hoop and place the flat brackets onto it so we are going to start the process of removing the hat hoop and then we're going to remove the driver from the pentagraph and this is the pentagraph the part of the machine that moves forward and back that is the pentagraph okay so there are three levers on your hat so you have one right here that you can see clearly there's another one right on the left side and then there's one kind of sort of underneath at the bottom bottom left okay so we're just going to at the same time just release all of those and you do that by clicking it in and then that will release it so you just turn it that way and then pull it off and as you see the hat is still hooped and to remove the hat from the hoop you're just going to release that lever that will come from around there and then you use these clamps to really pull your hat tight when you get ready to hoop your hats but those come off and then you will take your hat off all right guys so now we're going to get ready to remove the hat driver from the pentagraph and there's two screws and i have my allen wrench and we're just going to screw this off now you don't need to unscrew the whole thing okay you just screw it unscrew it but don't take the screw out of the hat driver or the cap driver, hoop driver. I'm gonna see if I can, um, oh, it's not loose enough. I'm gonna do this on both sides. All right, now that we have it loosened, all you have to do is slide it out. And now you have your cap driver removed, okay? And that's what will come out with it. For training with this machine, they want you to have the C-hoop uh, with its stabilizer, two pieces of cutaway stabilizer. I just kind of wanted to show you where you could kind of see the information for the hoop. On um, this one is pretty small because the hoop itself is fairly small. It's only 150 millimeters by 150 millimeters, but you can see here on this part of the hoop where the hooping bracket is, you can see the, the hoop letter and also the size, okay? That's also pretty standard for all of the brackets or all of the hoops. So if you ever get confused, that's where you'll be able to find it. All right, so we're gonna place this right here and I'm just going to slide it. It should be able to just slide on if you have it lined up correctly so that you can tighten it up. And so the bracket has like this little opening in the center and that's what you want to go on to this part okay and we're going to tighten it up you see here this fits the bracket perfectly and i place it going one two three one two three four five and also five from outside in on the other side so now it's time for us to tighten this up and of course you want to make sure it's tightened because you don't want this to shift while you're embroidering okay so i'm using my hands now to tighten it up but we're definitely going to use our 
Allen wrench. And I think this is the number four Allen wrench that we're using, the four millimeter Allen wrench. We're just gonna tighten it up because as y'all see, even though I use my fingers, it's not all that tight. You wanna do it for all four of them. All right guys, so we're at the panel and this is gonna be the first screen that pops up when you turn your machine on because your machine is set for your hat hoop. However, that can be changed, but there's so many different things that you can find on your screen to help you navigate through whatever you need to do. So you can head to select design and this will show you all of the files that's already uploaded onto your machine. These are just some folders, nothing's in that folder. So we're just gonna go back. Oh, I don't wanna go back that far. And here is the one Wacoma file that we just saw. All right, so then once you get ready to place files onto the machine, you will insert your USB into the machine and make sure that all of your files are DST for this particular machine. All Wacoma machines, I believe, take DST. I know the EM1010 needs DST files and also this one, okay? And then you also have where you could type text and place that onto your items as well. All right, so we're just gonna go back home. You can also select your hoop size. And I do know that we're going to be using a C hoop. And right now this is telling me that hoop C is in, an incompatible size, but our hoop size is actually 150 millimeters by 150 millimeters. So that's something that's going to more than likely need to be adjusted. All right, so it should be the hoop. This is like the hoop size is smaller than the design. Okay, so we're gonna close that. And then we're not even going to be using this particular design. So we can just remove that off of there because we're not gonna be using it. All right, so the next thing we're going to do since we aren't uploading a, a design just yet, you can head over to color and then you will be able to select the color that you want. Okay, now even though the color is like this on the screen, you need to look at your spool and see what color is going through which needle and then you will go ahead and adjust your color stops and your threads and that sort of thing. But you definitely wanna make sure that you look at that. All right, and let's see what design settings are. Design settings, this is if you're going to adjust your design to be slightly smaller. You do want to make sure that I prefer to upload everything exactly the way that I want it to be and not really worry about adjusting the size, but there are things that you can do. You can also duplicate it. And this works really well if you're working with patches, you can duplicate it um, in different ways certain copies, horizontal or vertical, that's pretty cool. You could also flip it horizontally or vertically, and then you can also rotate it. So you can turn on a 45 degree angle, 90, 10, it's different angles that you could turn it on. So that's pretty cool. And I'm just going to head back. Now there are different things that I like about this, and I can't show you right now until we upload another design that might have more thread stops and colors is how once you upload it, you can really tell like which sometimes I find myself running back to my computer and back to the machine just to make sure the thread stops are okay or I have to print out the print preview of it so I can see the different stops. But with this particular machine and this panel, you will be able to tell your thread stops when you upload it into into the machine. So this is just a brief overview. We will delve into it a little bit more. Uh, you will be able to go through different, you will be able to find different help information, like here, preparing your machine for threading, adjust the degree of your machine, selecting a needle, and these will walk you through how to fix and troubleshoot your machine. And I would definitely head here first prior to even contacting the company just to see if any of the information is here because this could take less time for you to look and see what the problem is, how to fix it, instead of waiting to hear back from the company and going back and forth. So I would definitely look at this, but this has tons of information for you to be able to get your machine up and running. 
Of course, you have your light on and off that will turn the light on underneath the pentagraph for you. And you have other things. You have settings. This is where you would find your embroidery parameters and different things like that. And yeah, they even have where they'll walk you through how to maintain your machine and the proper maintenance as far as oiling and different things like that. Now, if you look at the machine over here, there is a note to kind of give you or a sticker here that will tell you what you need to do um, every few weeks or every four to six hours. So once every four to six hours, it says to vash oil. And then it also has um, it labeled for you once a week, vash oil, and it shows you where to do that. Once a week, lubricating oil, it shows you where to do that. And then once every three weeks, lubricating oil or butter. And then it shows you exactly where to apply the lubrication. So I think this is a very, very good and handy cheat sheet. All right, so now that we have everything or all of our needles threaded, now it's time for us to place our bobbin inside. And this arm is where you would open up to place your bobbin inside of there. With this machine, your bobbin case comes inside of your toolbox. And we are just going to use this pre-round bobbin thread. And I love these because these are disposable and it comes pre-wound, makes life so much easier. All right, so we're going to get ready to place this inside. And you want your bobbin to move clockwise, okay? And so I'm just going to place that inside of that little slot there, bring it up. Once I bring it up, I'm then going to wrap this around this little pigtail twice. And then I'm gonna turn it back around just to make sure it turns smoothly, and it does. And you want it to move clockwise, just like that. All right, once we're done with that, we're going to place it in. And there's a little opening here, and that's where you wanna make sure you just slide it through. And you should hear a little click. All right, everything looks good. And our bobbin is all ready. So in preparation of our training, we need to hoop our C-hoop, and these are just stabilizers that you can use. They send a tearaway stabilizer, they also send a cutaway stabilizer, and they send some stabilizer that's meant for hats. It's a tearaway hat stabilizer that you can also use because you're gonna have to hoop a hat. So here I am getting two pieces of the cutaway stabilizer to place in our hoop. And as you see, I'm just showing you guys the top part. Right now, this is the bottom part of the hoop. And this is the part of the hoop that will go either inside of whatever garment that you're going to be using or stitching onto. And then you place your stabilizer on top and then you put the garments and then you're gonna put the top part of the hoop. You wanna make sure that your hoop is nice and tight. It should sound like a drum when you beat on it because that will avoid any thread breaks or any tension issues or anything like that. It'll help prevent those types of problems. But we're all hooped and now we're ready to get one step closer to our training. All right guys, part of the pre-training, you are supposed to hoop your hat. I did hoop my hat. However, I did not record that part. So super sorry about that. However, I've made it to my training day. And right now the training is done. In a Microsoft Teams meeting, you need to have your camera on. This is important for your warranty. And so we're just going through the different training steps. Before you actually start stitching, they go through the full layout of your machine. But right now, I've made it to stitching into that hoop that we just hooped. And this is coming out really, really good. I like that you can have this live training with someone just in case you have any issues with your machines and they can help you get some of those troubleshooted. However, some problems you will need to speak to a tech person if something else happens outside of like a thread break or things like that. All right, so yeah, I love how it's stitching. It's looking absolutely beautiful. I'm pretty happy with the outcome and our setup, but you wanna make sure you follow all of the setup steps in the pre-training in order to have a smooth training, okay? This training did take about 
three hours a little bit over three hours however every second is worth it especially if you are new to embroidery and you have questions with getting this done and so now we're just hooping or we're, we're stitching our hat and everything is coming out really really good i think i really like these auto hats and i might try them a little bit more i haven't really tried them before this is the first time but everything is doing good also when you're doing hats your design is going to be flipped upside down because that's how it's stitched so just don't be alarmed when you see your design flipped upside down but training was a success all right y'all so that's pretty much it we got this unboxed and everything is ready to go i am ready to go and if i didn't mention it our new Rakomas name our marquee 2001 10s panel machine is Broski, and so i am very excited to show you all everything that Broski can do i'm very excited about this addition to my business i think i'm going to be able to get so much more done more efficiently and it doesn't hurt that i still have my Rakoma em 1010 because my Rakoma em 1010 has definitely been putting in a lot of work and he will continue to put in a lot of work so i'm excited about getting both of these up and running to increase productivity in my business if you're interested in any of the Rakoma machines i do have a link listed below to their embroidery machines or dtf machines or heat presses anything that you may need i do have a link below i will also have a link below to mighty hoops because y'all i am not going to be using my machine without mighty hoops for long so i will definitely have a link listed below for mighty hoops if you enjoyed this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up also make sure to head over to facebook instagram and tiktok and join the craftable things communities there as well i would love to have you but that's it for today y'all thank you all so very much for watching until next time mm -hmm.